Hey there viewers, welcome back. We're back from vacation, or a little extended weekend rather. Gotta get back at it, got a million things to do, we're way behind. And one of the projects we gotta do today, we've got this uh, 2008 Jeep Compass. Uh, the customer dropped it off and requested that we replace the right front wheel bearing. Uh, must have been self-diagnosed, nothing I've had in or seen before, so ordered a wheel bearing and we're going to put this passenger front wheel bearing in and see what we run into along the way. So it appears that somebody just put a brand new CV shaft in it. Maybe that's when they noticed the uh, bearing was bad, if it, I guess. All right, so this is a press-in bearing. No hub assembly on this little guy. Um, so I'm gonna do it like we've done it in the past, where I'll be using a slide hammer. We're gonna knock this hub off there, and uh, then we'll just uh, pop the ball joint loose and uh, use our hub tamer kit. And hopefully it's one two barbecue, but uh, we've done some repair or some wheel bearing videos on uh, you know some, on that Toyota Corolla and on that uh, Dodge Caravan that started out super simple and then just got stupid on us so hopefully this one goes well He's got a new CV axle, so that's not seized up. I think I've mentioned in other videos using a slide hammer here or a puller. I always use old old lug nuts or wheel nuts rather, or just regular you know regular nuts with washers. If you use the ones that come with the car, when you smash on them, it uh, deforms the acorn on them and uh, really pinches them down good so I suppose you could probably put some washers on them or something like that to kind of help stop that but they get pretty well damaged here I can see there it looks pretty good. So 
So you can see when you do them this way, the uh, inner race you know, always sticks to the uh, spindle here, uh, or to this hub flange. A lot of times you can get a hold of these with a puller and we'll, we'll pop them off. Sometimes though, they're flush. Um, I don't really know how to describe it better, but the uh, bearing race is the same diameter as the uh, inner portion of the hub flange, so you can't get anything on it. You know, in that case, I just take the torch and just nick them off. You can use a, oh, probably a little cutoff wheel or something. What is it? A Dremel, I guess it is, and uh, you know, cut that. But uh, pretty efficient with a torch, so I can just blast that off there. So you can see once we got the hub flange off, this uh, snap ring here. It's pretty well rusted. Uh, you know, we're not going to go in there with a conventional snap ring pliers and just, you know, squeeze it and come out with it. So it'll be my habit. We'll take and uh, spray this down with some Panther P and we'll rattle around this edge of this with the air hammer. Just kind of shock that loose, hopefully. And once we get it working loose, hopefully we can get it, uh, get it up out of there. So what that does, just rattling on the edge of this uh, snap ring, you know, it jiggles it around enough to help get some penetrating oil down in there. Plus, if it's bonded tight with rust, uh, it should break that bond. Um, so I'm just going to hook a screwdriver down one of these notches and uh, make sure that it is free. If it is free, so hook a screwdriver, you know, maybe use a chisel or something, and and just tap on that with your hammer and uh, get that snap ring loose on both sides, and we'll pop it right out of there. Yeah, look at that. That side come right free. Yeah, not so much on that side. That's no big deal. Usually if we can get under one side, we're in good shape. Let's see if we can get that front edge out. There we go. Perfect. Once you get it out, a lot of times you can just start working it around. I know they make a special pair of pliers for this. They, I had made a mention of it in the Toyota video that we did. They use a very similar snap ring, but you know, in our situation where that's seized up halfway around, you know, pliers really wouldn't be any good to us. But going back together, they would be because this snap ring or is in good condition still. The little ears are still on it. Um, I think in that Toyota video, if I remember right, the ears uh, got broke off. So I'll put a put a link there to that in case you haven't seen that video. Because uh, you can still get these out if they break off. If it's in there, I just use my air chisel or my air hammer with a chisel bit, kind of cut a groove in it, hook onto it, and you know essentially use the same method, but uh, you know make it in my own groove. So uh, now that we got that out, go ahead and we'll just pop the ball joint loose and uh, get the hub tamer. So we'll take this pinch bolt out here by the ball joint. I don't know if that's splined in there or uh, what the story is. Oh no, not there, too bad, good. I see it's got an aftermarket ball joint in it. Somebody change that.
Well, of course, that was just done too, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's stick it back on that ball joint that'll hold it still for us. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be out or dangling around. Now, if you're doing this job at home and you don't have a hub tamer, um, well, you wouldn't have pulled the, you know, the hub face off here. You'd have left that on and essentially you just unhook your ball joint, your axle, take your two bolts out of your strut and then take it down to a shop to have a bearing pressed in it. Um, the only reason I don't do them like that is because I don't want to do a wheel alignment when I'm done. Theoretically, if these are, you know, factory bolts in that uh, strut, when you take those out, it's probably just a, you know, a straight through hole, no adjustment. If it has aftermarket struts in it or somebody's changed these out and put cam bolts in it, you know, now you gotta screw around with doing, doing a wheel alignment. Um, simply unhooking it from the ball joint and putting it back on, you know, doesn't change anything at all. So, uh, you know, doing the method that we use, uh, not only is faster, but you don't need to do a uh, wheel alignment. So, try a civilized approach to get that off before we get out the torch. So, this puller here comes in the uh, hub tamer kit. I believe it's just a tie rod end puller. So, we'll stick it under there. Of course, this one's broke. <laughs> a little foot falls off it here, so you gotta. We'll get things lined up and we'll give it a tug. Of course, it's gonna pull off that that ring first. That light, that lightweight steel ring. I think it's a part of the seal for the bearing. We'll get that yank out of the way because I doubt it'll catch the bearing here. thing and pulled it right off so that's pretty nice usually when you do these a uh, little that little tin uh, seal there outer part of the seal just uh, pulls off and then you take the bearing off but in this case this job is uh, going way too easy here all right so I'm gonna be using the hub tamer this is the uh, bearing uh, I'll put a link in the video so the bearing I've added to the hub tamer kit makes it a hundred times handier Essentially, if you've never used one of these, we're just going to press the bearing out right on the vehicle. This receiver cup I have on this one is just big enough to squeak that bearing through there, but there's not much of a lip here to press against, so I can't use the next size bigger. So, use what we have. I don't know why we're changing it, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel any grit or anything in it. Huh, well, we just do what we're told. I'm just going to take clean this up a little bit. There's crust and crap in here where that uh, snap ring sits, particularly where the gap was on the snap ring. So if you just take some time to pick that out of there. And when you go to put the new or put the snap ring back in, you don't have to worry about you know where it goes or lining it back up exactly where it was. So Got the hub all cleaned out. See that little black tab sticking down right there? Well, it's very important that you uh, recognize that. 
because that is your ABS speed sensor. Now this bearing might look like an ordinary bearing, but it actually has your tone ring for your ABS sensor on one side and then just a seal on the other. So you gotta make sure when you put this in that it goes in in the right direction that you put this, you know, magnet strip, I guess that some guys refer to them, but uh, uh, this exciter ring here for your ABS has to go in and face that sensor. So uh, you put that in backwards, you're gonna get an ABS light on. Right, I'll just give her a little shot of some slippery stuff to help it go in. Like I said, make 100% sure you put this in the right way. The magnet strip goes in towards the ABS sensor. Line that up. Basically, just going to push it in just like we pushed it out. So always want to make sure it gets started straight before you go. Give it the beans. You're not as self-aligning as you might think at first. But once you get them in a little ways, they sit pretty straight. I think we got it, so we'll just... I was pushing it in there, I don't know if you'll see it in the video, but it kind of jerked about uh, three quarters of the way in. I wasn't sure what that was. The ball joint popped up in. I had a ball joint just sitting on the edge of the joint and must be able to vibration the control arm came up in because I couldn't figure out why the heck that popped like that. But uh, All right, I'll go ahead and put the snap ring in. See if we can't just get that started up in there. Sometimes I can just push these right in once you get them started. Kind of hold it. Let's see if we can't just uh, get that tap, just get it started. There she goes. That pop right in on you. So if you do this long enough, you're going to forget that someday. And unfortunately, you're already going to have this on. But that's life. All right, we'll and uh, press our spindle in here in the same fashion. Don't forget the snap ring. I'll tell you that a thousand times, you're still going to forget one someday. I think we all have. So you can see now where that ABS sensor sticks down in from the back side of this hub and you can see that magnet ring or tone ring or exciter ring whatever you want to call it on the wheel bearing and how that corresponds there. 
So when the wheel turns, you know, that whole thing turns with it. Now unhook our ball joint, being that pop back in there. Put the uh, we'll put our CD axle back in there. Put her in there just like a 16 penny. Now let's put your washer and your nut back on the axle and make sure you tighten up that ball joint bolt to factory specifications. We're going to torque this down, put our rotor back on it. Put the caliper bracket back on it, and we're done. So this job went ridiculously well. That's kind of odd. I'll torque that hub nut to 180 foot pounds. Get our rotor toss back up on here. Now before you put your rotor on, you might have looked at that and seen the rust kind of around in that center groove. Well, if you're working on one of these, you'll notice that that center area is actually recessed. The rotor essentially only hits on this very outside lip and then the inner edge there. So you can look inside your rotor. You want to make sure the inside of this hat of the rotor is clean too so you can see where it hits right there and then on the very outer edge also. So if this isn't clean, you know, you got to take your you know, I'd use my gasket cleaner and just you know whiz that out, but uh, this has to be clean. We throw a little grease on them here because that'll help us get them off in the future. Put your little wavy washer on. cap here that'll hold the uh, cotter pin. Watch out now. Get our brake caliper back down here. Slide our caliper back on there. Put the bolts in it. We'll go ahead and, oops. Get that snugged up. All right, viewers, that's it. That job went pretty smooth uh, compared to the past few wheel bearings we've done here. Uh, Pretty standard, just your press in. I guess the only thing funky on this one is that ABS exciter ring. You know, definitely make sure that you've got the correct side of that bearing in and not the wrong side. Don't forget your snap ring. That's pretty important. Um, yeah, uh, like I say, if you are doing this uh, yourself uh, and you don't have a hub tamer kit, which I imagine most DIYers do not have, just pull that whole knuckle off, you know, separate your ball joint, your tie rod end, unplug your speed sensor, unhook your strut, and then take the whole thing either to a machine shop or to, uh, you know, just a local shop like this. Most of them will probably change your bearing for uh, 20, 30 bucks or something, or maybe a half hour's worth of labor, whatever the labor rate is. I don't, I don't know how they charge, but uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do. If you do tear it all apart, you probably should go have your alignment checked just to be on the safe side. So, um, 
yeah, I guess that's it. Anyhow, if you want to connect with me socially, you can find me on Facebook. You can also check with us, uh, connect with us on Google Plus and uh, join our circles there. And uh, if you like our uh, video here, be sure to subscribe. And remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.